Good morning. It's Wednesday morning and time for devotions. I would invite you to join with me in the invocation. Almighty God, as you have given Jesus Christ to be Savior and Lord, grant us now grace to accept and rejoice in our salvation and in his Lordship. Amen. I do have a few announcements this morning, uh, one of which is that uh, would invite anyone who is interested in representing Owego United Methodist Church at the uh, dinners that we have. Uh, they are all takeout at this point. Thursday night act dinners. Um, area Christians uh, serving and uh, uh, it's uh, once, well, it, it's seven times a year that our church is responsible. So if you're part of the Uigo Church and you would like to help out with ACT Dinners, uh, right now there are two people working the nights that uh, we're supposed to be, and neither one of them is a uh, is a member of the Uigo Church. And I had not heard about that until this morning, so I'm putting it out there and hoping that people will be able and willing to jump in. If you are, you can contact me via this, uh, this broadcast or however you want to put it. Um, in your responses, or you can call me, uh, you can call, leave a message here at the church. We will get you in touch with the appropriate people. So uh, I'm not sure when our next day is. Um, tomorrow, Act Dinner will be uh, doing meals, but I'm not sure that we're responsible for that particular day. So uh, keep that in mind, folks, and if that's something that interests you, I would invite you to jump right in. Uh, another <coughs> church-oriented announcement, we will be re-beginning Sunday school, uh, praise God, and that is going to start on December 5th of uh, this year, obviously, hopefully, uh, it's obvious, and uh, it's going to be a slightly different uh, version than what we ended up with last time. It will not be a junior church or during church time um, event. It will begin at 945 and go until 1020. Um, the kids will gather in the chapel and they will uh, meet there and do some sharing and praying and some music and then they'll split into two groups for, uh, for a Sunday school class, a brief Sunday school class, and uh, then hopefully we will uh, include them in worship. Uh, the feeling of the committee is that kids belong in worship and we would really love to see them there. So if you have some, we also have an, an adult class that is meeting and uh, we invite all and any adults who would like to be part of that to come and be a part of that. Uh, that meets at nine and uh, so uh, keep those things in mind. Uh, December 5th for our uh, children's Sunday school startup, and uh, we will hopefully continue going through the spring. That's the plan at this point. Short of any other new COVID restrictions, uh, we're going to roll, and uh, hopefully we will be able to meet the needs of some of the children in the church. Well, last last time we met was yesterday morning, and the scripture reading was from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, and went on through to verse 56, um, from 22 to 56. So we're going to just read a part of that today, because we're going to be working on these uh, through the rest of the week. So, <clears throat> this story, be, or this part begins with, begins a series of uh, miracles that Jesus performs. And so he says, uh, the Bible says, one day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake and, they, and the boat was filling with water and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up shouting, master, master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. He said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who is this then 
that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Well, may God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Well, um, you know, again, this is a series, as I mentioned yesterday, of miracles that we're going to be talking about that demonstrate God's power over things over which human beings have no power. Uh, never have, uh, never will under our own power. But uh, Jesus has authority and power over even these items. Now, what he demonstrates here is an authority and a power over even the weather. And uh, so they're out on this boat, and they're sailing along. Uh, it's going well enough that Jesus just goes to sleep. And a storm comes up, and my understanding is that storms come up very, very quickly there. Um, I used to work at Silver Lake at Camp Asbury summers, and storms would come quickly over the, uh, over the southwestern hills, and I remember one time I was mowing a lawn that was right down on the lake. And I mowed, you know, one pass down, which probably took 45 seconds, and back. And, uh, and when I got back up to the top, I turned around. <clears throat> and where there had been just completely blue skies when I was mowing down, I turned around and came back. And in the time that I came back... It, there was a wall of black clouds, and I was watching the lightning hit the lake and uh, and the thunder. And as fast as I could, I just pushed the lawnmower under the overhang from which I had retrieved it initially, and I ran, but I was soaked, soaked to the skin by the time I got around the house, across the road, and into the next house, which was the camp superintendent's house. And there I waited out the storm, and it passed just as quickly as it came. But in that time, it had uh, covered who knows how much. It came up that quickly. Uh, total blue skies, two total black skies in about a minute. It was low, and it was coming. And uh, because of the hills, you couldn't see it coming. Um, any number of times I've been out wandering in the fields in the uh, summer, and uh, I, I used to woodchuck hunt a lot, and I would carry my rifle on my shoulder on a sling, and more than once or twice, I would leave it in the middle of the field because I really did not want to carry a lightning rod while I was watching lightning hit close by, and headed downhill to get into an area which would have been much less likely to get hit by lightning. Um, so storms come up quickly, uh, my understanding is there they come up super fast. Um, that's what I've been told. No uh, personal experience, never been there. So this uh, everything goes from perfectly fine in a heartbeat to um, suddenly their lives are at risk. And, uh, and they're terrified. And they wake Jesus up. You know, he's sound asleep. And how is Jesus sleeping through the storm? Well, obviously it didn't worry him. He wasn't worried about the storm coming up. He wasn't worried about surviving it. He slept. He was tired. He'd been doing all kinds of stuff. Right before this, um, you know, we're hearing all kinds of parables. And uh, just, you know, Jesus' ministry took him from place to place to place to place. And, and he was constantly in motion, constantly traveling constantly speaking to huge crowds where he had to work to be heard. And it really was uh, an exhausting lifestyle. It was worse for him than the disciples, although it, I'm sure it was hard on them as well. And, and he finally had a time of respite, and he did indeed rest. Well, the storm comes up. Disciples are terrified. They wake him up. And he immediately calms the storm. The first thing he does is he deals with their fear, their greatest fear, and is in, in their mind saves their lives. Okay, because water was coming over the side, the waves were big, the, the boats weren't anything dramatic in size or construction. Um, they were made to sail on, on relatively small lakes and, uh, you know, to fish out of, and, and they weren't overly large and didn't have high gunnels. And uh, 
So it, it was a risky moment, to be sure. And Jesus immediately deals with the problem at hand. And, you know, says, cease, be still, and everything quiets back down. And the next thing you know, they're sailing along on calm seas again. Now, the disciples were terrified because they thought they were going to die. They were terrified because they could see the power of the wind and because they could see the threat of the waves and the water filling the boat. And they no doubt had known of others who had perished under similar circumstances. Um, but did you notice that after Jesus performs the miracle, stops the weather, and frees them from the burden of their fear, that their response is again fear. They were afraid and amazed. They were afraid of what they could see. Perhaps they were even more afraid of what they couldn't see. Now they had seen Jesus, no doubt, at this point, do many amazing things, things that they really couldn't fully comprehend or have, in fact, any idea as to how he did them. But they had not witnessed him control nature. Jesus, of course, is supernatural. He is above nature. He is God. He has that authority, to be sure. But they didn't know that. They didn't understand that. And, uh, and so when that happens, they are perhaps even more terrified than they were of the weather itself. But what Jesus demonstrated, you know, the final comment, the question that they ask is, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him? They realized that if they thought they had a handle on Jesus and on his power and on his authority prior to this time, they discovered that they were wrong. That they did not, in fact, have a clue about the power and authority of Jesus. And that this was going to be and given them an inkling of who and what Jesus actually was. So the question for you is, what storms in life are you experiencing? What storms are raging? Is lightning dancing on the water and on you, all around you? What is, what is going on that fills you in your life with terror? And have you, in fact, cried out to Jesus? You know, when the disciples wake Jesus up, I, I, I'm not sure what they expected him to do, but I guarantee that what he did was not what they expected him to do. They were terrified, and uh, maybe they wanted to wake him up so that he wouldn't drown with, without any chance of anything. I, I don't know. But what is it that you expect Jesus to do? You know, the disciples didn't know who Jesus was. You know who Jesus is. What is it that you expect Jesus to do with the storms that are raging around you even now? Because he is abundantly equipped with power and authority to deal with things according to his desire and according to his plan. You are a part of that plan. So that doesn't mean the storm's going to quit. Let me just clue you up on that one. But as you fall down on your face before God, as you seek God's will and God's desires and God's action in this time, in this storm, I suspect that God is going to show you the way through it. It may continue for a while. The storm may have a purpose that you don't know about. No matter how difficult it is for you, no matter how uncomfortable it may be for you, it has a purpose. And God is going to be working his purpose in that. And he's going to be working his purpose in you, in and through it. So, you know, the disciples didn't ask Jesus to stop the storm. They didn't have any idea he was even capable of that, right? But what they did ask is that he awake and be aware. I can tell you with certainty that the Lord is awake and is aware of any storms that are raging around you even now. 
And I recommend to you with my whole heart to lean upon him as you go through those storms and receive what blessings may be coming. What was the blessing the disciples received here? It was the knowledge that Jesus was much greater, much more powerful, much different than they had experienced to this point. Jesus revealed himself to them more fully, and Jesus can do the same for you in whatever storms are raging around you in this time. So, I would, on that note, invite you to go forth and serve with the strength, the love, and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Amen. We will see you tomorrow. We'll be coming back to this passage starting on verse 26 of Luke 8. Bye-bye.